So we've been investigating the town of Mockton, and we've been wondering and investigating the question, um, what caused the town of Mockton to flood? faster so the water could go through the glacier moraine to the town of Mockton. So I heard there's a claim and I heard some evidence. Can someone, do you want, can I have someone repeat what you heard? What was the general claim that you heard? What you see in the video today is young kids weighing multiple hypotheses, checking each other, doing some fact checks, and trying to get to the heart of what part of my statement do you agree or disagree with. The project that we are working on is really thinking about what certain scientific practices that are central to NGSS look like when working in primary classrooms, so in grades kindergarten through second grade. What claim did you hear? I heard that if the Glacier of mostly sand and some pebbles in the mountain. Mm -hmm. then, Th then the water would go slower. Then the water would go slower. Do you agree or disagree? Agree. Can you tell me more? Because when we did the experiment with earth materials and we used sand, it went slower than soil, like pebbles. And I want to you add, add on. on. Yeah, I want to add on to Jamie's. I agree with. It is very compact and uh, it has little tiny spaces in between for the water to go through. But I really think that sand went the slowest because sand has the most littlest things in it. This video looks at a whole unit of instruction and how we how teachers can support scientific argumentation inside of modeling at the beginning, middle, and end of a unit, and how we support kids when agreeing and disagreeing with one another. We started with drawing our initial models and talking about our own ideas and personal experiences about what we think caused the town to flood. At the beginning of the unit, the students are presented with the phenomena and they're given a model to be thinking about how and why the town had flooded. And so as a teacher, I'm listening to students' ideas, listening to um, their own language that they're bringing. His idea was that water was, was, go, was going through the ground and then there was like a layer of stone up over here um, and then the water kept on rising up. Our model is that maybe the dam exploded because there's such a powerful water current. Their initial models don't necessarily have a lot of writing so it's important that you're listening to the students' ideas. Yesterday, uh, you shared your initial ideas of what you think might be happening that's causing the flood, flood for the town of Mockton. And so I have three claims that I want to share with you, and I want you to think about them to yourself on whether you agree or whether you um, would like to make any changes or if you like them just the way they are. So one of the claims we have is it says, we claim that the water filled up behind the dam and went up the hill and then down to the town. And so I have made copies of the models that showed that idea. Once I had seen those patterns, we presented the claims and asked students um, to see if they agreed or disagreed with those claims, if they wanted to make any revisions, and had their models where we felt it represented those claims. So she was saying this model should be over here. Yeah. Are you, are you agreeing with that? So this model was in the wrong section. I think there are a few considerations that are important in selecting key claims at the beginning of a unit. That's to anchor modeling and really explaining a phenomenon. 
The first step that Kitten engaged in was really looking at the range of student models when they first initially thought about what caused the town of Moncton to flood. And so she was trying to select out what are, what are some of the ideas she's seen across models that were common, that were familiar to students, and that also represented a range of perspectives that they'd be able to pursue together over time. Kids come in with a range of really productive and sensible ideas and experiences from their lives. Even young students are coming in with a wealth of experiences, and those are what are particularly generative for supporting their sense making. Share your idea again, and I want everyone to think about where does this idea go, this personal experience. So hold on, put your hands down, and let's share that story one more time. So me and Andrew were using those tools, and we pushed the water off the concrete, and so then it soaked inside the soil. So this is an idea that would agree and support this claim, okay? We might have some that would, that you would disagree and have some kind of experience that would say that can't happen. So we use the claim T-charts to collect evidence and thinking about the evidence that we are using, whether it proves or disproves the, that claim. Then as students built their knowledge, they started using other pieces of evidence in the experiments that they've done, the videos that we were watching, the texts that we were reading. And so building that over time, students became more confident in their science ideas. Some students changed their science ideas because of those experiences. We're gonna be shopping for evidence today. And you're gonna be thinking about these two claims on whether they help support or disprove these ideas. They make claims at the beginning of a unit and then they constantly revise them over time. And they're, they're amounting evidence and weighing evidence throughout the entire unit. But it's all done within the drawing of a scientific model. And they're constantly revisiting and drawing what they can see and what they can't see happening. Tell me your claim again. Uh, if the glacier left mostly sand and some rocks in the mountain, then the water would go slower to the town because sand collects the water when the, it, the water passes by. Do you agree with that? So the next step is I want you to be thinking about evidence. We've been talking about evidence. And so how do we know that? So I know this because what I'm hearing you say is that because they're so close together that it's slowing it down to so making it go slower. Is there an example where we saw that because it wasn't so close together that it went faster? Was there a different material that? Well, I think it was with the pebbles. So we can look to see too, right? Is there, so it was a? The pebble, well, the, so the clay pebbles. was 100. Did that take longer or shorter amount of time? Longer. Yeah. They're usually modeling and argumentation together, and in that way, these practices co-develop, where they get to get better at scientific modeling and drawing what they can see and what they can't see, along with developing much richer scientific claims over time. We do a lot of thinking about how um, scientists is not just usually one person, and that is, is a group of people working together as a community. And so we spend a lot of time at the beginning of the year talking about what does that look like and what does that sound like. It's not quick at all. Yeah, it takes time. So what are I you agree, hearing Jamie I say? heard Jamie say he, that he thought that the sand was going to, I, I can't remember now. So what can you can do? Can you please repeat it, Jamie? I agree with Nick's idea because the sand is more packed together than the pebbles. There aren't as many holes in the sand. Yeah. And I agree with that, that idea. I feel like they've changed in having the confidence of being able to share their thinking and agreeing and disagreeing comfortably. I see them now challenging each other and 
thinking about the ideas that they share and asking really good questions or clarifying um, what do they mean by that. I want to thank you for sharing and taking a stand today and we'll continue thinking more, yes, and we'll continue thinking more about what's causing this. Um, so nice job today, thank you.